Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third graders. How are you doing today? I just was reading one of my most favorite stories, um, parts by Ted Arnold. Happens to have a sequence. So if you're into funny books, I just want to share. These are some great ones you should be checking out. OK, so I am super excited that I get to hang out with you and support you as you become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. Today. We're gonna go through, we're gonna practice our high frequency words. We're gonna look at some short vowel words with inflectional endings. And then I've got a little bit of a story we're gonna read and look at some, kind of some word choice. All right, are you ready to start? Let's get, let's get going. So our first thing we're gonna do is our high frequency words. And these are those words you're gonna come across often in your text that you're reading. So we wanna be able to build that fluency. Again, if you, Notice one of them here that you need extra practice on. Don't be afraid to just write it on a piece of paper and practice it throughout the week so that you become more fluent in your reading. That's gonna help your comprehension too. You are in charge of your own learning success. All right, let's get going. Let's read these. Here we go. R, around, ate, at, ask, as, another, any, away and back. Nice job, third grade. So today, I have two of them we're gonna practice right here. I have as and ask, okay? Again, they look like they're rather short little small words, but sometimes those small words can really have some power in a sentence. So help me put them in the correct sentences today. So Katie did, mm, she was told. Now. I'm gonna make fun of Katie for just a second because Katie's my daughter, I used her name today. So Katie did, mm, she was told. If I put ask, Katie did ask, she was told. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm so glad that you say that because it doesn't make sense. But if I said Katie did as she was told, then that would make sense. And this is where I get to kind of make um, a little poke at my daughter because you know what? She actually does do as she's told. She's a good girl. All right. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Does that make sense? It does. Great job, third grade. I love that our brains are turned on and they're all warmed up and ready to go. So here's what we're going to do today. We're working on those short vowels. We're reviewing that short E, the short O, and the short U. I brought my sound spelling cards to remind me. I have my egg card. My egg card reminds me that that short E says eh, eh, like at the beginning of end. Do you hear that eh? Or in the, be or in the middle of leg. Good job, you can hear it. We're practicing our listening. I brought my octopus card so that it reminds me that the short O says ah, like in the beginning of olive, or in the middle of the word, knock. Good job. All right, one last one. We've got our umbrella card to remind me that the short U says, uh, like at the beginning of the word, under, or in the middle of the word, drum. Do you hear that, uh, uh? Nice job. Okay, so I have some words. We're gonna read them, and then we're gonna practice building um, and making additional words out of them. So here we go. Read these with me at home, big and loud. Beg, block, and scrub. Nicely done. Boys and girls, this week we've been talking about inflectional endings. Inflectional endings are just adding that S, I, N, G, or E, D. So for example, if I wanna take the word beg and change it to begs, I can simply just add an S. So the dog begs for a snack. 
Now, if I want to change beg to begging, there is something that has to happen. Do you remember what it is? That's right. Because it's a vowel followed by a single consonant, I have to double that final consonant before adding the ing. So I'm going to put that right there, and now we've got the word begging. Nice job. Now, for if I want it to be something that happened in the past, I need to add an ed. Now, ed, remember, makes three different sounds. Ed can say d, ed, or t. So we're going to listen. Begged. Okay, it's going to say the d sound. When I have that single vowel followed by a consonant, I double my consonant and add ed. Now my word says begged. So we've got begs, begging, and begged. Nice job. Let's try another one. How about block? Okay, so if I'm going to add my s and I want to change block to blocks, I simply add an s. She blocks the stairs. If I want to add ing, she is blocking the stairs. Well, boys and girls, I've got a vowel, but look, one, two consonants. Do I need to double my consonant on this one? No, I don't have to do anything. Look at this. I can just put that in there. You guys have got your thinking caps on today. I can tell you're doing a great job. Because there's two consonants, I can just add ing, blocking the stairs. What if I wanted to say blocked? Blocked, now it has the t sound, remember? But that's still gonna be with an ed. But again, I don't have to do anything with my spelling because I've got my two consonants. Nice job. Let's practice this one. Now this one has a whole lot of consonants in it. But where's my vowel? It's right here. How many consonants are after my, after my vowel? Just the one. So scrub, to change to scrubs, I just add my S. But if I want to change scrub to scrubbing, remember, we want to protect that vowel, so double the consonant before adding ing. And now we have scrubbing. She is scrubbing the pots. And what about if we're all done scrubbing, then we would say we've scrubbed with the d, d, d sound for that ed. But remember, we need to double the consonant and then add our ed. Scrubbed. Nice job, third grade. I am so impressed with all the things that you are doing and working on. I want you to practice, especially look for them as you're reading your stories and going through. All right, so boys and girls, I have actually just one little second for you. I have a poster right here that's gonna help me out. And we're gonna go through and read some of these words that are on here. And I want us to listen for those short vowel sounds. It's important that we not only hear those short sounds, but we can identify them. So it says right here, um, we're going to listen for the vowel sound and write the word under the correct heading. If the word does not have the short E, O, or U vowel sound, we're going to mark it with an X. So let's start with this first one. Let's sound it out. Funnel. Does funnel have the short U like umbrella? Funnel. It does. So I'm going to find my short U and I'm going to write funnel right here. Then I'm going to circle it so I remember I've used it. I'm going to look right here. I've got clean. Does that have the short vowel sound? It does not. It's got an E sound. How about gush, gush. Yes, it's got the short U, so I'm gonna write it underneath my short U. You guys have done a great job identifying some short vowels. I wanna give a little bit of practice looking at 
writing and creating our words with the S, the ED, and the ING, just like we were doing before. So looking at the word check, if I want to add an S, do I have to change anything? No, I can just write it. So let's just do that. Check, and I add the S. Do I have to do anything special when I add the ED? Nope. So I'm going to say she checked because look, I have one vowel and two consonants. How about checking? You guys are so smart. Check in just adds the ing. Good job. Boys and girls, we're going to practice with this particular worksheet a little bit more tomorrow. But today, I want to take some time to introduce a story to you with Tom and Anna. Tom and Anna are going to have a conversation about <laughs> Thanksgiving. And you're going to say, Mrs. Nix, it's only August. Why are we talking about Thanksgiving? But you know what? It's got some great words in here to practice those short vowel sounds. So I want to introduce it. We're going to read it for the next couple of days. I've got different parts to read. All right, join me. All right, giving thanks. Tom was happy. It was the last day before Thanksgiving weekend. He grabbed his lunch from his kitchen table and went to school. At lunchtime, he sat next to Anna, a new student from India. Are you ready for the long weekend, he asked. Of course, she said, but why do we have these days off? Thanksgiving, of course, Tom said. Do you know what that is? No, we don't have it where I come from, she said. Okay, so boys and girls, I have, and I'm gonna turn this around just because I wanna show us. I have a sentence that I wanna pull from this text just so that we can talk about what does it mean that he grabbed his lunch from his kitchen table and went to school. If I don't know the word grabbed, I can look at some context clues and I can think about and I can visualize in my head that the lunch went from his kitchen table and went to school. So here's my question. Did it get left behind? No, it didn't get left behind because it, it went from the kitchen and now is at school. Is it hidden? Nope. Did he take it with him? Yes, he did. And boys and girls, I know that grabbed and took, he took his lunch, mean about the same thing. Authors will often give us some clues on how to make sense of a word in text. I wanna thank you for joining me today and learning. Um, and I'm so excited that you're getting ready for school today. Have a wonderful morning. Remember, you're responsible for your learning. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for 